Thank you for watching this DPL tutorial video series. This is the second video in a series on fault tree modeling basics. We're going to continue where we left off in the first video, building our simple fault tree within the DPL9 fault tree software. I'll build out the grid side of the fault tree first. As mentioned previously, I need to break no power from grid into three smaller components, a generation failure, a distribution failure, or a private line failure. It should be noted that I have a long driveway with several of my own private utility poles leading to my house. A generation failure would mean that an entire power generation facility is down, and so is not supplying power to the grid. This is a highly unlikely scenario in my location. Consequently, I'm going to treat the generation failure event as a basic event, which means it will have no predecessors. This event will take the form of a binary node and will need a probability of occurrence assigned to it. I'm going to add a new binary node to the fault tree and will employ a new method for quickly connecting this new node to its successor. I will place it directly onto the OR gate name grid to make the connection. When you place a new binary node, the general tab of the fault tree node definition dialog will open. I'm going to provide a long name of generation failure, except the default short name, and will copy the long name to the annotation. If I switch over to the data tab, I see there are fields for entering probability and cost data for the node. For the purposes of this video, I'm only going to be assigning probabilities and not costs. I'll enter a probability of 1 e to the negative 5. The distribution failure is a derived event that will be further broken down into two component faults, occurrence of severe weather or a vehicle crash. I need to add an OR gate, which I'll name distribution failure, accept the short name, and will copy the long name to the annotation. In my geographic location, we deal with multiple bouts of severe weather and hundreds of vehicle crashes each year, but these events do not result in a distribution fault every time. This will be reflected in the logic of my fault tree. I'm going to drop two new AND gates onto the distribution failure OR gate I just created. Next, I'll add the binary node that represents a severe weather event. I'm going to provide a long name of severe weather, accept the short name, and will copy the long name to the annotation. This is a basic event, so I need to assign a probability of occurrence on the data tab of 5%. Severe weather doesn't always result in power loss, so I'm going to drop another binary event onto the AND gate that represents the event that a distribution fault occurs given that a severe weather event occurs. I'll name it General Power Failure Weather. I'll supply a short name of GPAFW, and we'll use the long name for the annotation. On the data tab, I'll assign a value of 0 .001. I'll take similar steps for adding two binary events connected with an AND gate for the vehicle crash event. I mentioned earlier that I have several private utility lines and poles along my driveway to deliver power, so it is possible for my home to lose power if my private lines or poles are impacted by a severe weather event. I'll drop an AND gate onto the OR gate named GRID. I'll provide a long name of private line failure, we'll accept the short, and we'll copy the long to the annotation. The same weather events will impact both general and private line distributions. Since I already have a node in the tree that represents an occurrence of severe weather in this location, I'll simply make a duplicate of it. To do so, I'll hold down the shift key and we'll click the severe weather node. While still holding shift, I'll click on the AND gate named private line failure. This creates a duplicate event connected to the AND gate named private line failure. An asterisk is added to indicate that it's a copy. The two nodes, SW and asterisk SW, represent the same event. Now I'll also need to add a binary node for the event that the private power lines fail given the occurrence of severe weather. I'll assign it a value of 0 .001. Now I'll break down the backup generator side of the model. This failure can be broken down into two basic events, generator out of service or generator out of fuel. You may wonder why the probability for the generator out of fuel is so high. The fuel used for the generator comes from a general purpose tank that is used for other gas powered machines around the home. Now that all the basic events have been defined and assigned probabilities, our fault tree is complete and the probability of occurrence for any event in the tree can be calculated. The first analysis I'm going to conduct is calculating the probability of occurrence for the top event. To do this I will select the power failure node and will select fault tree analysis calc prob. 
DPL brings up the Calculation Complete dialog and displays a remote likelihood of 0 .000014. I can calculate the probability of occurrence for any event in the fault tree. Let's say I'd like to know the probability that the backup generator fails. I will select the Backup Generator Fails node and will press the Calc Probs button again. Yikes, there is a nearly an 11% chance that my generator will fail. One of the primary outputs of a fault tree that I'd like to introduce are cut sets. Within a given fault tree, there should be some set of basic events such that if each event in that set occurs, the top event will occur. Such a combination of basic events is called a cut set. A minimal cut set is a cut set such that if any of the basic events are removed, the remaining events will not be a cut set. Before generating the cut sets, I'm going to update the output number formatting again. This time I'm increasing the decimal places for probabilities from 1 to 4. To generate minimal cut sets, I will select Fault Tree Analysis Minimal Cut Set. Within the Setup dialog, I see that Power Failure, the top event, is selected by default, which is what I'd like. In a large tree, there may be so many minimal cut sets that you may only wish to look at those that have a reasonable chance of occurring. You can limit or increase the number of cut sets reported by increasing or decreasing the minimum probability of occurrence value. Lastly, the cut sets will be ordered from descending probabilities from most likely to least. Note that if I'd included cost data in the model, I could limit and sort by those values. I'm going to leave the defaults and we'll click OK. The cut set viewer is activated. Notice that the cut set is displayed as a circuit diagram. A circuit diagram is an alternative way of viewing a fault tree. The diagram consists of all the basic events in the fault tree connected by branches. Gates are not displayed but instead define its structure. It is often useful to view cut sets in a circuit diagram in order to see how the basic events interact to cause the top event to occur. Events, displayed as circles in their true state, are colored red. The circuit diagram displays all of the elements in the first minimal cut set that are set to true in red. In this first, most likely cut set, the severe weather, private power failure weather, and generator out of fuel are set to true. Information on the current minimal cut set is displayed within the status bar. You can scan through the minimal cut sets using the arrow keys. It should be noted that a full list of the minimal cut sets is also displayed in the session log and can be viewed within the Select Cut Set dialog. This is accessed by selecting Fault Tree Display Select Cut Set. Within the dialog, the first column displays a probability, followed by the cost of the cut set, if included in the model, and then a list of all the elements by variable name in the set. You can choose to display the short name, long name, or full name of the variable within the dialog. Again, the list of cut sets is sorted by probability or cost, as specified in the minimal cut set dialog. This concludes our DPL Fault Tree video series. I would encourage you to visit our website where you can request a free trial license of DPL9 Fault Tree. There is a link in the description of this video that will allow you to download the Fault Tree built in this video series.